We're going to start streaming. Hi, friends. Host Eric here, host of Talking with Famous People. And we've got an important topic of discussion today. As you can see in the chat, Elena's asking a very important question. She says, sorry for my lack of education, but what's a moisture hole? Um, Jeremy knows. He points out it's always a consideration. It's always his top consideration. And, and frankly, mine as well. If you are like me, you wake up every morning and you say, okay, there's some meow crammed up my moisture hole. Who crammed it there? And what kind of meow is it? It's a natural way to begin any day. And uh, if you aren't careful, some of those chunks of meow can have jagged edges. Can tear the soft, juicy flesh of your moisture hole. Okay, so let's talk how does moisture hole and meow relate to MVTI type well every type has a moisture hole not every type recognizes their moisture hole as a source of moisture many types who have moisture as a as a disempowered function will instead think to themselves hey that's not a moisture hole that's a meow hole because it would seem for the person who's not a moisture lover that what's coming out of their moisture hole is mostly meow it's not originally meow it begins as moisture which then gets converted into meow as part of the body's natural detoxifying process so let's say i'm walking around and i have a powerful internal feeling well obviously that's kind of like the system malfunctioning. It's like, ah, oh, what's this thing? So what happens is my moisture hole, it seizes upon the moisture, wraps it up into a tight little ball, and converts it directly into meow. So the reality is, well, I might wake up every morning thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, the meow fairy's been here again, cramming more meow at my moisture hole while I sleep. In reality, it's my own moisture hole that's converted the moisture into meow. Now, because I've tried to bypass the moisture wallow phase of moisture processing, which is naturally occurring for most people, and just directly proceeded to the conversion of meow, well, none of my meow pieces have soaked properly in the moisture, and so, like I said, they have a tendency to have jagged edges, and that's why my moisture hole is always so sore. Now, Jeremy, on the other hand, his moisture hole could polish a whole river's worth of stones. Um, that's how vigorously he spends the time to wallow his moisture bits in the moistness within his moisture hole before allowing the conversion process into meat. That's why his meow is so much less visible than my meow because, frankly, it's smaller. It's, a little, it's, it's been rounded. It's been smoothed. It's been processed. Now, Elena, she spends much of her time evaluating the moisture holes of others. She's looking right now at my moisture hole. Is that meow or is that moisture, she wonders. Well... Don't get too close. It's a little bit of both, but it smells really bad. You don't want to get it on you. Okay, just got to warn you about that. Remember, when naturally occurring moistness doesn't have the time to process itself into a palatable version of meow, then sometimes the meow will look uh, disturbingly disruptive to somebody who is a meow connoisseur like the INFJ. Now they're both a meow connoisseur and a moisture connoisseur, but not of their own moisture. That's the meow part of it. So um, I feel as though Elena probably has a better handle on my moisture, both pre-meow conversion process and post-meow conversion process than she does of even her own. That's how positionally Centered, centered in the circle of meows and moistnesses that she is, as opposed to me, who positions himself as evaluating or objectifying those same manners of meow and moisture. 
Okay, well, we're talking about important stuff this morning here on Talking with Famous People. If you've got a moisture problem or a meow problem, we are taking callers on the uh, the old TWFP phone line here. It's 1-800-TWFP, TWFP, TWFP. Ah, here's the caller now. Hello? Yes, my name is Marla. Hi, Marla, what can I do for you? So, sir. Yes, I'd like to discuss my moisture hole. Well, sure you would, Marla. Can you tell me where it's located? Uh, yeah, it's um, just above the Mia conversion mechanism and just below the Mia Piao blood barrier. Oh, well, thank you. That's okay, great. I'd love to talk about that more. Thank you so much for the call. Great question by Marla there. She didn't really have a question, but she said some really interesting things. What she mentioned is something that I've forgotten to talk about before, is there is, of course, the Mia Piao blood brain barrier, which, um, it, depending on where you, depending on how finely you crush up the Mia, and which kind of Mia Piao membrane you apply it to, can really have significant impact on how your Mia, Moisture, and Piao display in various contexts. So for example, an ENTJ, if their Mia gets too close to their moisture during the Mia, Piao, blood brain barrier crossing, then they literally die. It's, it's, a, it's a design flaw in the ENTJ. If you want to kill an ENTJ, all you have to do is confuse them about the distinction within themselves of their own Mia and Piao. They'll mix, form a toxic mix, and it'll release fumes that cause the ENTJ to uh, die of a, asphyxiation. It also, apparently, if you if you let it go long enough, it produces a nerve toxin. So I don't I don't know why ENTJs decided to do that with themselves, but you know they're high achievers or something. I think they're so smart. I suck my metaphysical intellectual dick, ENTJs. You aren't that smart. You're more like successful. That's different. Gah. You want to talk about some jagged meow. Yeah. Oh my god. Stop scraping me with your jagged meow. Yeah. You're drawing blood and making me chafe. Do I look like a chafing dish to you? I'm no chafing dish and I won't allow your chafe-centric worldview to impact me so negatively. All right, we're gonna check the live chat. I'm sure questions about meow, meow, moisture are pouring in. Uh-huh, see? Both times rugby says, Hi Eric, I've watched many of your videos. They are not only informative but really funny as well. I'm a young 22 inch B and I'm already bored of short term relationships. I thought you were going to say you were already bored of this video. Can you make a short sum up about which MBTI types I could have a long term relationship and why and what problems with others? Well, sure, Botond. Botond Rugly. That's got to be an anagram or. What's the, is that what it's called? Yeah. Botan Rugly. Huh. Huh. Now you make me want to decrypt your name. Well, I don't know. I will answer your question instead. Get an ISFJ, of course. There are precious perfect angels. Kimberly is absolutely a precious perfect angel. Why? Because she's a fucking ISFJ and she's also matches up with me and all, everything else too. Like all of us, she's the same. But even if it weren't all the same, she'd still be way better than a non ISFJ for me for sure. Now, if you're a young ENTP, it is also true though that you will have less need for the SI you seek increasingly as you get older and more resistance to the uh, SI from others that eventually you come to embrace. The younger the ENTP, the less they want to be actively mothered. But they they want to be mothered more than they think. Now, let's say you can't find yourself an ISFJ because you refuse to look at all. 
things are they're quite common actually but um even so at 22 you got no excuses at 46 i had a struggle finding one it was going to be a struggle because they get married and they they get they're all paired off already they love to be in relationships so if you want to have if you want to have my lover be an isfj then you gotta go and find one when you're just 22, yay! That's a, a cheerful song by the Spice Girls that encourages you as a 22 year old to lock down your ISFJ now. Why? Well, because they'd marry off early. And you're, you, like, I got super lucky. Kim was single for like 15 years because she couldn't find the right person. And try, it was trying the whole time. So, you know. The thing is, uh, you're in a much better position to find one because they usually don't marry off by 22, you know. They'll marry off by 25 or so. Now, uh, it, let's say you don't get an ISFJ, but you still want to get somebody that you like a lot and love a lot and want to be with. Well, I'm going to go with your second tier options. Your second tier options are your INTP and your INFJ. Those are options number two. They're basically tied in my mind. INTP, you'll have a more clinical, less emotional, and more intellectually engaging relationship, but ultimately you'll run afoul of the fact that they want to decide things to, for the purpose of deciding them, and you want to decide things for the purpose of enabling further deciding, which is different. Or concluding. So, uh... INFJ, you're going to run afoul of the fact that there's no SI being provided. At least INFJ can provide some SI. But INFJ, you're going to be like, it'll be instant connection. It'll be easy. You'll get each other. You'll feel a certain intu intuitor's bond because they got that, that sweet, sweet, juicy, and moist NI. Introverted intuition. Which I ignore and which is super sexy because I ignore it and assume it takes care of itself, but it doesn't actually. So when somebody's sitting there and going like, I represent the process of introverted intuition taking care of itself, so you can be extrovertedly intuit, intuited, and I will sit here and go, that one, that one, that one, that one. And we'll both make it to England together, as they say. Well, that's why I know Chase is a good mix, but again, both of those types have polar SE, but INFJ also has a slot or insecure SI, which doesn't complement your fourth slot SI. <coughs> <coughs> INFJ's got all the right functions, but not quite in the ideal complementary order for you. And if you failing that you can't get it you can't find an ISFJ all of a sudden every INTP within 500 miles of you dies in a car accident and all the INFJs um, turn lesbian well USFJ is not bad ESFJ is a pretty good match you'll compete over whose show is this anyway that'll happen for sure because they want to be. They want you to be a, a, a lead player in their play, and you want them to be a lead player in your play. And neither of you wants to be really in the other person's play. So that's the problem with the ESFJ long term. But it works great early on, and the ESFJs, if nothing else, really want their relationships to work and are willing to work hard on them and are willing to do more than their fair sharp part really. Uh, and if an ESP is wise, they will they will take advantage and embrace that ESFJ relationship uh, for as long as it as it lives if they're in one. But if an ESP is extremely wise, they will refuse to get in any relationship that's not with an ISFJ, because that's duality, and that's some fucking rich and chewy nougat. Let me tell you. Hey! 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 Fucking cat dirt. Fighting each other with their fighting bones. Now that's some piawi meow. 
And when Meow turns to Piao, and the Piao itself is as jagged as the Meow, it was sourced in the moisture holes of those that produced the Meow and moisture in the first place. Well, for Christ's sakes, let me tell you something. In those circumstances, imagine you can get some jagged Piao. So, this morning we're talking moisture, we're talking meow, we're talking piao, we're talking moisture holes, we're talking jaggedness, we're talking the meow, meow, piao, blood brain barrier process, and we're talking about personality types. What's the best type for you? I'm going to go back to that live dashboard. If somebody else would like to know what the best type for them is, I'd be happy to answer that question. If you've got a moisture hole related question, I'm all about the moisture holes. And if you've got a meow, piao related question, I'd be happy to address that as well. Oh look, Botan Rowley is, is saying stuff. I really understand when you say, you are not old enough for ISFJ. I need fun, I need intuition. I'm studying in an economics university and have never met an ISFJ yet. They are quite rare in real life. And on the internet, they're fairly common. Real ones are still fairly rare on the internet too. Are they at church? But I don't like that place. Too many rules. ESJs are so fucking annoying for me. My first girlfriend was ESJ and I got bored of her at 1.5 months after posting all her meals every day for one week. Well, I mean, look, here's the thing. Don't assume that you understand yourself well enough to know which type you'd actually like. You are, after all, an ENTP. We don't really... <laughs> If you think you you, you kind of kind of have a feeling that it would be this way or this way, or you've thought it through and you concluded that you'll feel this way or this way, I put very little weight on that. <laughs> we we don't know. I still don't know. I I do know the analytics for others a lot better. Like here's why ISFJ is better for you. I understand why it's better for me. I understand why. INFJ ultimately is not a great choice, and neither is INTP ultimately a great choice, neither is ESFJ ultimately a great choice. Definitely want to be with an introvert, ideally. Unless you can't get one of the three best kinds, then you can slip down to that extrovert. After ESFJ, I'd say ISTJ would be the next choice. Or that's the same tier as ESFJ. That's tier three, you know? Tier 1 is ISFJ, Tier 2 is INTP INFJ, Tier 3 is ESFJ, ISTJ. Uh, you don't want to go to Tier 4. I mean, who would want to go to Tier 4 relationship? Well, I guess I'll go out with you. You're Tier 4, but fine. I guess it's good enough. Who would be Tier 4? Huh. I guess ENTP, ENTP, ENTP would probably be tier four, and INTJ. I'd go with those ones. That's tier four. ENTP, INTJ. Those would be good relationships, actually, for a while. ENTP, ENTP. You'll run. You'll you'll play. Where is the audience member? And. INTJ, ENTP will play. Can I get a little bit of a meow, please? Because you each want the other one to provide you some something you're not providing, you know? So those are the top four tiers for ENTP. Try to stick on tier one if you can. Now look, don't use your moisture hole to make decisions about relationships during ENTP. Do not use your moisture hole. Don't use it going out. Don't use it going in. Don't use it in the shower. Don't use it in the bin. Don't wear it as a hat. Don't smear it on your cat. Alright? But do acknowledge later on that you're going to really feel the resonance of the correctness of the decision in your moisture hole. And if you don't and it persists over time, then it's a bad decision. But, but don't but be very hesitant to ascribe meaning to moisture hole resonance in the short term. 
it's something you can look back on and, and sort of retrospectively provide meaning to, but do not use it to make decisions because if you do, the meow that you excrete from your moisture hole will turn into a toxic version of pia, a toxic version of pia, and a toxic version of meow itself, which will create what? Anti moisture. Now, if you've kept up with the scientific journals, you know that astronomers, astrologists, scientists, and Scientologists have all been predicting, modeling, suggesting, whatever, that for every piece of mya in the world, there is a piece of anti mya And that if the two are to come to connection with each other, they exterminate the, each other into nothingness. That that Mia and Piao are not subject to the laws of thermodynamics in the sense that you can create and destroy Mia and Piao. And in fact, if you Mia and my Piao with the cor correct the correct moisture level of of anti Mia and anti Piao, then we could both die. Or we could both spontaneously reproduce. It could go either way. It could be we die or we just start birthing offspring from our various orifices. Just blah, just coming out of every hole. Children. That's the ultimate meow piao blood brain barrier conversion moisture hole extravaganza. You explode into offspring and then you die in orgasmic ecstasy that lasts for an eternity. It's said that when you die, the light slowly fades from you, and you hear a single, high, angelic meow, like that, and you're carried away into eternal moisture. You don't have to fear death, it's just a land of eternal moisture. Damn, that's true. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Who was that? Is there somebody here? Okay, well, yeah. Hmm. Got the token ENFP in the room today. Chalo. How's your moisture hole? Eh. Is the meow within it a little jagged this morning? Oh, no. Well, um, I got off work at 6 in the morning, so I'm pretty good. Hmm. Working in charge of the front end at a grocery store, so it's fun. I guess you get to handle a lot of groceries in that capacity. Yeah. I'm in it. <laughs> Selling my soul to the devil. Handling groceries is a is what it, they call it when um it's a certain it's a certain kind of sex move. Handling groceries. Um yeah, I suppose you could assume there's some kind of connotation involved, I guess. Handling groceries is when you hang the girl upside down from the ceiling by her feet, and um, you sit on a spinning chair, and you place your genitals near but not physically in contact with her, and you both spin around them like ice skaters. Now that sounds like a lot of fun. That's called I have... ha handling the groceries. It's a weird sex move. It's invented <laughs> by the interpretive sex performance art duo sexy and sexy pants and they did all sorts of performance art versions of sex acts that didn't actually involve any arousal or sexuality at all so it would be things like they stand next to each other on a pier each of them dressed in 
work suits like a plumber and make sounds as though they were having orgasms. They said they were married as a consequence. And shockingly, though they had never made physical contact, both of them gave birth nine months later to a single baby boy at the same time, each having gestated within him or her one half of the individual who at birth pushed together and became one. Unfortunately, it was slightly vertically off, so one eye is about half an inch lower than the other. The whole side of the body. But not really too bad for such a complicated birth, if you think about it. Um, let me tell you, the afterbirth was absolutely appalling. It was half anal mucus, so you didn't want to get that stuff on you, let me tell you. So, that's just a segue back into, welcome to Talking with Famous People. We're discussing this morning a lot of important issues. I'm telling stories. Um, stories about the history of the world. Yeah, well, you're not the first person to observe that, Jeremy. Afterbirth and grilling go together like corn on the cob and deep frying. It's the, it's the default way to cook it. <laughs> so, next up, we're going to take a commercial break right here, okay? So, thank you for thank you for watching. There's a commercial coming up right now. And after the commercial, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about my recipe for deep fried sour cream and my recipe for salad. Remove all the vegetables. We'll be right back. Whew. That was a good, good segment there, guys. We can all relax for a bit while we're on advertisement. They are selling something right now to the people who are watching. Anyone want to have some behind the scenes conversations while we're on commercial break? No, I don't want to go shoot heroin in the bathroom. You are? You're God? Oh my gosh, you guys, God's here. Hey God, what up Jehovah? Who's my Jehiza, Hiza, 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 Noza, Niza, Noza? They have, then they have some explaining to do. Oh, 30 seconds, guys, 30 seconds. I know. If I could understand your ineffable, ineffable, and your ineffable, ineffable. Oh, hi, welcome back to Talking with Famous People. Hope you enjoyed our commercial breaks there. One of them, I believe, was for dog food, and one of them was for furniture. If you're not somebody who purchases either dog food or furniture, I'm sorry for the waste of your time. We're talking God. God has come to visit us here. And it looks like he was just here briefly and has left. He was here. I think he's gone now. K Rock? Is it a boy K Rock? I can't tell who God is anymore. I know who. Because is and 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 is. Of course I do. I understand you can't mansplain for me because that's not mansplainable. I'm gonna womansplain something to you. You better get out my vagina with that meow. That's what the kind of thing that women say. Here, let's talk about unimportant things. <laughs> I mean, you know, listening to Kim and um, Sarah's conversation yesterday, stretches of it, just like, oh my God, the banality of this is so banal. No, it's not, Eric. It's banal. It's not pronounced banal. It's banal. Like canal. Okay? Ask God. God, am I right? Is it banal? It's banal, right? Thank you. 
God himself agrees. <sighs> How many Jehovah's does it take to cram a moisture hole full of meat? Only one, provided he's omnipotent. It's a trick question. That's not a trick question, Eric. Okay, let's check the live dashboard. <laughs> this has got to be the, the nonsensiest live stream I've ever done. Brandon Parker. In a pinch of leather couch can be dog food. In a pinch of leather couch can be fun. In a pinch of leather couch can be mild food. And in a pinch of leather I like it better when it rhymes with anal. Don't call me banal. I like it better when it rhymes with anal. Don't call me banal. I like it better when it... I like it better when I change the channel. That's why I'm banal. Almost great philosopher. Almost great philosopher. Almost, 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 almost great philosopher. Let's see here. Finish the theory. Expand it. Eric, well, I would like to make sure you publish an actual book. That is your task. To finish the well, thanks, God. Thank you for clarifying my purpose, finally. I have been asking you in my prayers. And finally, you've come and answered my prayers to clarify my purpose. Now, can you help me with some of the more jagged chunks of meow in my moisture hole? Can you use your divine meow removal powers to take the jaggedness from the meow in my moisture hole? Oh, my Jehovah. I'm not a philosopher, says Jeremy. I am just a jackass. And I in T. Jackass. I cannot concur to the claim on the live stream. Okay, well that's fair, God. I wouldn't want you to have to if you ha if you make your miracles too provable, then they wouldn't be miracles anymore. I get it. It's you, it's a fine line line of miraculousness you gotta walk. You know who really understood your ways apparently was E J R and D. You guys remember E J R and D? He changed his, he deleted his channel, he had a different channel for a while called God's Friend. And he talked about some kind of crazy nonsense. He stopped by one time and tried to, like, well, I was, I mean, I was picking on him a bit. But I mean, you can't, I can't be accused of picking on EJRD because he was way, way bigger than me. I had just some dude with like 50 YouTube subscribers and he had like, even though he'd, fucking self-destructed he still had like 10,000 or something man that is some weak ass NI <laughs> oh EJRND EJRND was an ESTP who did typology videos very popular and who basically had a sanity implosion in front of everybody as the the attention or the success with YouTube started like going to his head basically or just finding him wacky ass conclusions he'd say things like if I were to jump in traffic in front of a bunch of cars God wouldn't allow me to get hit he'd reach down and stop the cars or grab me from there let's see what God says at time Eric, I finally did my official IQ test. I'm now certified almost genius at 136. Take that, INTJ. IQ 135 estimated. Well, I mean, is there an IQ? What, what test did you take? Do you have a link to it? Oh. <laughs> I might take it. I could take it right now. You take that would be an interesting live stream. Let's see. Mensa. Can you take it on their website or what? I'm assuming you can. You go onto YouTube and you try to find a song, and the only songs that come up are like. They don't have the actual song. Well, that's because some sort of. You know. Whatever. So, Mensa practice test? 
The real test is thirty dollars. Purchase the practice test at eighteen dollars. I don't want to fucking purchase their test. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Where can I take it for free? Free accurate intelligence test. The problem with the intelligence tests on the internet is they tend to inflate your scores. 17 best online tests with accurate results. This is a good link. I'm gonna share this. And like all these retarded K pop songs come up and they're like new pseudo covers of like the original song, but they're not. What song you know, are you trying to find? It's a song by the Eagles. It was playing at my store. It was called One of These Nights. It was so good. Yeah. Crazy, crazy nights. It was such a good song. And it's like, it's so sad that like they don't have the actual song on like YouTube. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to hijack the conversation. It's funny you should mention Don Henley though, because um, I was listening to Life in the Fast Lane on the radio the other day and was tripping out on what a fucking great song that is and what great lyrics it has. He's, I mean, that's an archetypal song right there. It's yeah, Don. super kick-ass awesome. <laughs> super kick-ass awesome is what it is. Super kick-ass awesome and covered in jizz. A super kick-ass awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super kick-ass awesome, gonna be bad. Hold on, I'm going to post this link, then I'm going to take this test, one of these tests, and then I'm going to be like, yeah, like that. All right, here we go. Control V means paste. In computer talk. Okay, so let's see, which test am I going to take? I hate spatial shit, I'm going to try to avoid the spatial one. 40 minutes, it takes too long. For 30 minutes. All I want to do is when you have to do as fast as possible. Ah, three minutes and 26 seconds. Why does it keep doing that shit? I like this organ. Like mac and cheese. Hello, Lena. And I like this organ, mac and cheese. Okay. I'm going to go to classical. Classical intelligence test. Okay, friends, you can take it along with me if you'd like, if you're watching this. Or if you think, that's so boring, Eric, why are you live streaming this? Well, you know, I'll try to throw in some banter. I would say, how could you object to me live streaming this if you've been watching a live stream about cramming mia in your moisture hole i don't know how that would make sense really but you know maybe that is a more interesting thing for you to hear about it's possible okay so i want to take this start the free test once the answer expresses the meaning of the specified word that's for sharing comforting Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, it's gonna be, uh, let's see, twice the previous plus one. 20, uh, that's not right. It must be eight. Oh, add six to it. No, this is it. Okay, add three to it. Add two makes six. Add three makes nine. What? God damn it. A seven? I'll say 21. Which of the figures in the bottom row should be logically in the spot of the question mark? One, two, three, two, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four. Hmm. I guess I think I don't know why this one, but I'm gonna take this one. Why are stamp collectors and architects? All the drones are stamp collectors. Architects are not drones. These things. that I think. What is the correct answer to the following problem? Okay, so eight percent point close six. Okay. So I want a six. 114 I'm not even a possible answer I'm going to club 8 goes 100 8 equals 100 7 equals 108 6 equals 114 okay, so 8 times Answer we got opposite of tough uh, tender. Water is to pipe as blank is to wire. Electricity. What's the name best fitting for the specified words? Complaint. Which is the blow figures can be composed from loose parts. I hate this shit. I can't. I don't know. I can't even imagine that at all. 